Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, join my son. Good morning, Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and check us out at our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on more of our amazing science tutorial videos. And also check us out at our website at www.fallenshorninterfaces.com so you can catch more of our content and material. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into our video for today, which is Photosynthesis 101. So let's do this. So now let's go over the basics of photosynthesis. And photosynthesis is a process by which green plants and some other organisms use sunlight to make foods from carbon dioxide and water. And you have three basic reactants for photosynthesis. You have sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water, and the products that are produced are sugars and oxygen. So let's go ahead and take a look at our basic diagram of photosynthesis below. So our three reactants, first we have that sunlight energy <clears throat> that goes in. And then we have our carbon dioxide, which actually comes from the atmosphere and from the air that we breathe out, or the carbon dioxide we breathe out. And then we have our water. And all of three, all three of these reactions are used in the process of photosynthesis to produce our products, which is sugars in the form of glucose, and then oxygen gas as a byproduct, which is what we breathe in to help us survive. Everybody knows the basics of photosynthesis, but in this video, we're going to be diving deeper into the process of photosynthesis and how it works to actually make sugars and oxygen. So before we divide, dive into those processes, we're actually going to look at those important workers that helps make photosynthesis work. So first we'll start off with our chloroplast, and this is where photosynthesis actually occurs. So this organelle right here is our chloroplast, and this is where the process of photosynthesis happens at. Then we look at our stroma, it's the fluid portion of a chloroplast. So that's all this fluid right here inside of this chloroplast, that's our stroma. Then move on to our thylakoids, and they're interconnected and arranged in pancake-like stacks called grana. So if you look over here to the right, here's our grana or our granum, and these are those pancake-like stacks. And then chlorophyll is located inside of our thylakoids. So inside of each one of our thylakoids, that's where we have our chlorophyll located in. Then, speaking of chlorophyll, it's a light absorbing pigment found in plants. And chlorophyll A and B absorb blue, violet, and red parts of the visible spectrum, but they do not absorb green light well and reflect it. And this is why plants look green. And then finally, we have NADP, and it's an electron carrier that can accept high energy electrons and transfer them and most of their energy to another molecule. And this is going to be more important as we move further in our process of photosynthesis diving deeper into photosynthesis and there are two types of reactions required for photosynthesis. First we have our light dependent reactions and they require light and light absorbing pigments in the form of chlorophyll and they use energy from sunlight to produce ATP and NADPH and it occurs in the thylakoid. So let's look, let's look at those two reactants. So first we have this sunlight that goes in and then we have this H2O or this water that goes into our thylakoid. And remember our chlorophyll is that pigment that's used to absorb that sunlight. And then our products are going to be oxygen, which is a byproduct that is released. And then we have ATP and then NADPH, which all three of those are going to be products of this process. Then we move on to our light independent reactions, also known as the Calvin cycle. No, no, no light is required in this process, and ATP and NADPH are used to produce high energy sugars, and it occurs in the stroma. So our reactants for this product, process, like we said earlier, are going to be NADPH, ATP, and then our carbon dioxide. So all three of those go in as reactants. And then our products are going to be sugars, ADP, and NADPH. Our primary product that is going to be produced is going to be our sugars that actually come out. And the ADP and the NADPH, they, actually, they are actually recycled by this process so they can be used all over again. As an overview, the light-dependent reactions use sunlight energy and water to produce oxygen and convert ADP and NADP into the energy carriers ATP and NADPH. And this takes place in the thylakoid membrane. Remember earlier I said we was going to dive deeper into these processes. And so the light-dependent reaction actually occurs in four steps. And I like to call it PEPH, which helps me remember it as an acronym. 
So the first part of this process or the first step is photosystem two. And this is where light energy is absorbed and produces high energy electrons. And water molecules are split to replace the high energy electrons, which releases hydrogen ions and oxygen as a byproduct. So what do I mean by that? Here is photosystem two. So I go ahead and put step one right here. So here's that sunlight energy that comes in and it's absorbed and produces high energy electrons. And then the water molecule right here is actually split into hydrogen ions. And then we have the oxygen gas, which is given off as a byproduct. And that's what we breathe in. And then we move on to step two. We have our electron transport chain. I'll go ahead and level that as step two. And this is where the high energy electrons move down the electron transport chain to photosystem one. So here's our, our high energy electrons. And I'll just go ahead and start putting electrons and having those high energy electrons actually move down into photosystem one. And notice how they move down this electron transport chain. And then the energy produced is used to pump hydrogen ions across the thylakoid membrane and into the thylakoid space. So here are those hydrogen ions right here and the energy produced, it takes it from this thylakoid membrane and actually pumps those hydrogen ions into this thylakoid space in here. And then we move on to step three. Here's our photosystem one right here. And the electrons are re-energized at this point from sunlight. So here's that sunlight re-energizing those electrons. And then a second electron transport chain transfers these re-energized electrons to NADP+, which produces NADPH. So the second electron transport chain transfers those electrons and it turns that NADP plus into NADPH. And then our fourth step, and I'll go ahead and label it right here, the hydrogen ion movement and ATP formation. We've hi we have hydrogen ions that pass back across the thylakoid membrane through the ATP synthase molecule and are used to convert ADP into ATP. So we have those hydrogen ions and they're actually pushed back across this thylakoid membrane through the ATP synthase and the ADP is actually converted or changed into ATP. And those are the four steps of the light dependent reactions. So just in case that you got lost in those light dependent reaction processes, let's go ahead and take a look and just break it down to the basics. We have sunlight that comes in as a reactant and then we have water that comes in from the roots that comes in as a reactant. And then we have the three products that come from the light dependent reactions. We have oxygen gas, we have NADPH, and then we have ATP. And the NADPH and ATP are going to move into the light independent reactions. Then the oxygen gas that is produced is actually going to be breathed in by other organisms. After the light dependent reactions, we move into the light independent reactions, or better known as the Calvin cycle. And this is where ATP and NADPH from the light dependent cycle, along with carbon dioxide, are used to produce high energy sugars in the form of glucose. And the Calvin cycle occurs in four steps. And I like to use the acronym CECC to help me remember those steps. So first we'll start off when carbon dioxide enters the cycle. So we'll look at step one. And we have these six carbon dioxide molecules and they're combined with six five carbon molecules to produce 12 three carbon molecules. So those six carbon molecules, they combine with those five carbon molecules and they produce these 12 three carbon molecules. And this process is known as carbon fixation. And as we move along to step two, this is our energy input. So we get energy from ATP and high energy electrons from NADPH and they're used to convert the 12 three carbon molecules into high energy forms. So here's those 12 three carbon molecules and we use the ATP and NADPH to convert them into higher energy forms. Then we move into step three. We have the six carbon sugar that is produced and we have those two three carbon molecules and they're used to make a six carbon sugar. And that six carbon sugar is actually glucose. Then move on to step four, our last step. We have the five carbon molecules that are regenerated and the remaining three carbon molecules are converted back into six five carbon molecules, which are used in the next cycle and the process starts all over again.
Now let's move on to a concept map of the process of photosynthesis. And I even included a word bank for you at the bottom to reference as well. I'll start you off with the first two and then you're gonna take about a minute or so to finish the rest of it. And so photosynthesis includes two processes, the light dependent process, and then also the light independent process. So at this point, go ahead and pause the video and take about a minute or so to fill in the rest of this concept map. Now it's time for you to check for understanding. And you're going to use your notes and knowledge of photosynthesis to answer the following. Once again, I'm Coach Spivey, signing off with my son Jordan Spivey. And if you haven't already, go ahead and like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on even more of our amazing science tutorial videos. And also check us out at our website at www.fathersoninnovations.com. And as a note, go ahead and build your future today so you don't have to worry about it tomorrow. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, and positive day. Peace.